In a previous video, which I've linked here and below, I explained the concept of a software defined network where we have a controller that's managing network devices. The example that I used was an OpenFlow based network. That was one of the original or first software defined networks in recent times. There was a lot of hype about OpenFlow in the past, but never really took off. People today are not really using OpenFlow except in very specific niche environments. Another version of software defined networking is what's called an overlay network, where we overlay a network on top of an underlay network. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss that in quite a bit of detail. So overlay networks go back a long way in time. So in the old days, we had a traditional telephone network. The intelligence was in the telephone network. So the public switch telephone network that AT&T would have built or British Telecom would have built here in the UK. The phones were dumb. They didn't even have dial tone without the network giving dial tone to the phone. So the phones were essentially stupid. But then that got revolutionized with voice over IP. Then suddenly we were using the internet as a dumb core and I shouldn't say it's totally dumb, but from a telephone switching point of view, it was dumb. We were basically setting up calls across the internet and the devices in the core internet didn't understand what the calls were doing. They were just routing IP packets. So I phoned you using Skype or WhatsApp today. I phone you, the internet doesn't understand what we're doing. I mean, WhatsApp calls are encrypted. So we're setting up a tunnel across the dumb central internet so the intelligence is now in the endpoints rather than in the core network. So notice the difference. In the old days, intelligence was in the network, end devices were dumb. That switched round now, core network is just high speed forwarding, that's what the internet should be doing, high speed switching, routing of traffic. Intelligence is in the edge, not in the core. So that was a whole industry that got revolutionized. The PSTN, Public Switch Telephone Network, was intelligent. Endpoints were dumb. Intelligence was moved to the edge, to the endpoints. Core became dumb. All it was doing is high speed forwarding of traffic from A to B. So if I made a call from the UK to the US, the core internet routers are just trying to move the traffic as quickly as possible from the UK to the US. They don't understand the call setup process. I mean, WhatsApp, Again, he's setting up encrypted calls. The telephone system in WhatsApp or in Skype is out of the control of the core internet. Okay, so that's great, but in networking for many years, enterprise networking, it didn't work that way. We would have, say, Cisco IP phones on a network and they would mark their traffic as important, but then the network had the intelligence of saying, okay, this traffic is more important than that traffic, and then we try to implement all kinds of clever stuff on the network. So the applications were still dumb, but the network was intelligent. Notice where I'm going with this. Network was intelligent. Applications were dumb from the point of view that a PC just sent traffic to its default gateway. And then the network took care of things. Intelligence in the network, endpoints were dumb. VMware and others changed this entirely. So VMware purchased a company called Nasira. Nasira almost got bought by Cisco. But in a data center, when we're using ESXi, as an example from VMware, they said, okay, we don't need an intelligent network. We will put the intelligence in the ESXi servers, in the servers, because the servers have visibility of the applications running on them. The server, ESXi server, has visibility of the VMs and the applications running on the server. The network can't see the VMs like the ESXi server can. So rather than having an intelligent network, we make the network dumb just like the internet. It doesn't have visibility of the applications and the VMs on the ESXi server. And what we do is we set up tunnels across the core network. So you could have 
And it doesn't matter. It could be Cisco routers, could be HP switches. It doesn't matter. Your core network is simply there to route as quickly as possible from one ESXi server to another ESXi server. And we build what they call here an overlay network. So we have our IP network, traditional, say, IP version 4, and then we build a whole new network on top of that called an overlay network. This underlay network, the physical network, doesn't understand what's going on because all it sees is tunnels. Think of WhatsApp. Think of IPsec tunnels that you use across the internet. You can have the internet and you build encrypted tunnels across the internet that connect various uh, sites to, of your company. So your company may have sites in the US, in the UK, in Canada, in Japan, whatever. You set up these VPNs across the internet you would be very upset if the internet routers could actually see inside your IPsec tunnel. The whole idea of encryption is to hide the internal network information from the core internet network. Same principle here. Now we're not using typically encryption in a data center. They use, rather than IPsec tunnels or GRE tunnels, they use VXLAN tunnels. The whole idea of a VXLAN is, think of a restriction in traditional switching. We have eight. 2.1Q, it's restricted to just over 4,000 VLANs. You can only have 4,000 VLANs in a network. Now, if you're running big ESXi servers and you have lots of customers, and then you have lots of departments for lots of customers, and they want a whole bunch of VLANs, you run out of 4,000 VLANs very, very quickly. So VXLAN supports 16 million VLANs. And I say VLANs because that concept no longer exists. 16 million subnets rather than 4,000 subnets in 802.1Q. So in a traditional switching network, we would create up to 4,000 VLANs. That's how we would implement security, let's say, by restricting who can talk to who based on VLANs or subnets. But in a traditional switched environment, we kind of limited. That doesn't scale to a data center. So in a data center, they want to use this whole concept, and let me go over it again just to make sure that it's clear. We have a core network, could be Cisco routers, Cisco switches. Now notice the politics here because VMware and Nasira basically changed the game. The core network now doesn't have to be fancy because it's gonna be like the internet. I just need the core routers to route traffic from one ESXi server, so one VMware server to another VMware server. And just assume we've got a whole bunch of VMware servers. These VMware servers will set up tunnels to each other automatically. They're not encrypted, but it's the same concept. They will set up a tunnel from one ESXi server to another ESXi server, and they will use a totally different subnet, totally different network. Just like you, if you're setting up a VPN across the internet, will use a different subnet, different IP addressing to the core internet. You can route RFC 1918 addresses across the internet, agreed? if you use a tunnel. So the outside IP address would be a public IP address when you're routing from one router to another using an IPsec tunnel across the internet, but the inside IP addresses could be RFC 1918 addresses. The core internet doesn't see that data because it's encrypted. So the whole idea in a data center is the core network could be very simple, basic subnetting, we don't need VLANs, we can run routing everywhere. So this solves another problem because let's say we wanna have a VM on one ESXi server and another VM on another ESXi server, but we want them in the same VLAN, same VLAN, same broadcast domain. They must be layer two connection between these two VMs that are in different servers. Now you might say, why would you wanna do that? Now think about vMotion. The vMotion is something that allows you to move a VM automatically if you want, from one physical ESXi server to another ESXi server. So when the load on this server gets too high, it can automatically migrate the VM to another ESXi server to use resources on this ESXi server. But the problem is you've now moved the VM from one server to another server, but you wanna keep them in the same VLAN. So what happens if I move it to that server over there using vMotion across a network? Now, traditionally, we would have to run layer two across this because that VM and this VM are on the same subnet. So we need to have a layer two connection across. But with this overlay network and this concept of doing away with a clever 
core, the core network can run routing protocols. So we don't need spanning tree. We just run OSPF everywhere as an example. So it's a layer three network, but this VM running on this ESXi server and this VM running on this ESXi server can be in the same subnet because they are connected across a tunnel. So this PC could have an IP address of 10.1.1.2. This PC could have an IP address of 10.1.1.1 slash 24, let's say. When a broadcast is sent by this PC, it goes into the tunnel, sent across the tunnel to that PC on the other side. Now, it gets complicated with broadcasts and multicasts, but just think of the concept that these two devices are on the same VLAN, when in actual fact they're not, same VLAN, because this infrastructure is routed. So we are basically pulling a cable logically from that VM on that ESXi server to this VM on this ESXi server. So logically, you've got an Ethernet cable from one side to the other, but it's just a tunnel created using VXLAN. Now, I went into a lot of detail here. Let me just summarize. Overlay network is a network that's built on top of an underlay network. Underlay network are physical devices, which could be Cisco routers and switches. ESXi, so from VMware, will build, and it's actually NSX, it's not ESXi, it's NSX is the product that does this. NSX will build a whole new network, an overlay network across the underlay network. This underlay network doesn't understand what's going on with this overlay network. As an analogy again, think of this underlay as the internet and the overlay network as your VPN tunnels going across the internet. The core routers don't have visibility of the traffic that you're encrypting through your IPsec tunnels. The core Cisco routers and switches in a data center don't have visibility of the VM traffic going through a VXLAN tunnel. All they see is this ESXi server wants to talk to this ESXi server, or this ESXi server wants to talk to that ESXi server. They don't understand that it's actually a VM running within this ESXi server that's talking to a VM within that ESXi server. So we're basically tunneling traffic across. SDN has been very popular in the data center, but there haven't been many offerings for the enterprise. So SD Access is a product that revolutionizes the way that we configure and manage enterprise networks, specifically campuses. So SD Access is used in the campus, SD WAN can be used in the WAN. Notice the term, software defined something. I want to introduce these concepts now in the automation section because notice we are automating networks using a controller or using an application. Rather than manually configuring networks through the CLI, we are automating the networks through the use of a controller. Software defined access. Now, just software defined could be software defined coffee. I mean, there's so many terms with this word of software defined networking got abused. We had software defined networking that was open flow. Then we had software defined networking that was using APIs. We had software defined networking that was overlays. So we spoke about overlays and underlays already. Basically became software defined whatever you like. But uh, software defined access or SDA is Cisco's solution of changing the way a enterprise network works. So traditionally in an enterprise network, we would have spanning tree. Uh, that causes a whole bunch of issues because we have to match up you know, forwarding of ports to HSRP default gateways causes a whole lot of issues. So we want to do away with spanning tree. And what we do is we just run routing protocols everywhere. So the default gateway of your PCs will be the local access switch. So the switch on the edge, the switch that they connect to rather than a call switch or a distribution switch. We run OSPF everywhere or routing protocol everywhere. So we do away with spanning tree, we do away with port blocking, that kind of stuff. Basically, the idea is the network gets managed as a fabric. So we have all these routers and switches that are controlled by a controller. And then similar to NSX from VMware, what we do is we're building tunnels automatically, VXLAN tunnels once again, where we build an overlay across the underlay network. So the core underlay network can be fairly basic. Rather than configuring a whole bunch of access lists on the core devices, we can do everything as a policy on the SDA server and then apply a policy on the network devices. And DNA Center will basically build stuff automatically. So it will build the VXLAN tunnels. It will apply the policies. So we have this concept once again of intent-based networking. And intent is, I wanna do something, 
but I don't want to have to explicitly write everything down to make that happen. So as an example, I want to stop PCA talking to PCB. In a traditional environment, you have to create access lists that stop those devices from talking to each other. But with an intent-based scenario and and some of the other uh, controller-based implementations, I would basically say, okay, this guy can't talk to this guy. Put a cross there. So that's all done through a GUI as an example. And then that applies a policy to the network that basically stops that. So you as a network engineer don't have to go and configure access lists manually. Your intent is stop this guy talking to this guy and the network just makes that happen automatically, which is quite scary in some ways because what happens if it goes wrong? So the whole idea of this SDN stuff is fantastic and I don't wanna blow it out of the water straight away, but just be aware that you should kind of understand what's going on under the hood because what happens if something goes wrong? But the principle is, we have an underlay network, then we put VXLAN tunnels over it, which allows us to apply policies on the overlay network rather than on the underlay network. So we can stop this guy talking to this guy much more easily using these tunnels than to try and have a single access list on an interface of a router that blocks people across the entire network. Much better way of doing things. It's basically the way it's going. So we have a controller that manages a whole bunch of devices in the enterprise. Now, just stepping back a second, sorry to jump around. Um, Software-defined networking was more for the data center. So it was, NSX was a fantastic success in the data center. Cisco have ACI, also a data center product. But what about enterprises? So SDA is an enterprise solution where we take software-defined principles and apply it to an enterprise and we're applying policies on that network rather than in a data center. So basically, simple things like, okay, let's get rid of spanning tree. So we run OSPF or routing protocol everywhere. Everything's layer three rather than layer two. But you know, how do we get this device to talk to this device? We can apply a policy through a GUI or a management station or a controller, if, if you wanna use the, the right term, that applies the policy onto the network without you having to manually configure a whole bunch of stuff. The idea is use, is this term of abstraction. Abstraction is used everywhere. Uh, as an example, if I wanna write a piece of Python code, I don't have to know how to make that do something on a hard drive. I'm abstracted from the low level programming. The operating system abstracts me from the hardware. Operating system abstracts me from network cables, stuff like that. I'm programming in a high level programming language, Python, that goes all the way down through the stack and actually makes something happen ha something happen on the, the network. So I'm extracted from assembly language as an example. I'm abstracted from low level stuff. I use my brain for doing high level stuff rather than low level stuff. So very s real world example, pilots. A pilot today doesn't fly from the UK to the US manually, the whole way. What do they use? They use autopilot. So the idea is autopilot allows the pilot to take care of high level tasks while the low level stuff is taken care of using autopilot. Now the airplane has all of these sensors that give information about altitude, stuff like that, and then the plane can guide the pilot. But autopilot can cause problems where the pilot tries to manage the network, or should I say the plane, through autopilot by adjusting various high-level parameters rather than just grabbing the plane and flying it. And there was a really interesting video where they were talking about this issue where automation has actually caused crashes because pilots no longer fly the plane, like physically fly it. They try and adjust the planes flying through autopilot. So they, they try and feed information to autopilot that then flies the plane and adjusts adjusts the plane. But if you've got a plane flying at you, you as a pilot should grab the airplane and fly it out of the way rather than trying to adjust autopilot. And I think that's the same thing that we as network engineers need to be careful of, is don't rely on the autopilot or the cleverness of all of these applications. When the network is burning or there's a fire, you need to jump in and fix the problems. So automation has its place, but it's still important to understand how networks work 
because automation will allow you to break a network very, very quickly if you don't understand what your automation is doing. I mean, if a programmer just writes a script that sends a whole bunch of BPDUs into a network running spanning tree, it could mess up your whole network. So you need to understand what your program is doing or what these applications are doing. So there's huge advantages to abstraction, huge advantages to automation, but you still need to understand networking. You're still a network person. You're still a network engineer. You still need to understand protocols like spanning tree, OSPF, et cetera. But I think for me, the programming side is very exciting because Cisco now have this DevNet track. So you have this world in front of you which didn't exist. You've got this world now where you can go traditional networking with a bit of programming, or you can go programming with a bit of networking. So I think if you're starting in your career, you have two wonderful choices. And I mean, you just got to decide what you enjoy. Do you enjoy programming with a touch of networking or do you enjoy networking with a touch of programming? I think those are going to actually become closer and closer in future. So five, 10 years from today, the line between networking and programming will just draw closer and closer. Networking is changing, and I've been saying this for many years. I mean, now we're going more to the cloud. So cloud stuff is becoming more important. But don't think that if you put it in the cloud, it's going to solve your network problems. It's still a network. You still have to manage the network cloud as in your network. I mean, if you put a VM in, a, in the cloud, it's cool. It's just a VM. But what happens if you have virtual machines in Asia and in America and in Europe? You suddenly, you start working with load balancers. You start working with firewalls. You start working with access control lists. You start working with VLANs, not call that, but you start working with all the traditional networking stuff. So just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean that you can ignore networking. Still going to be a lot of work for network engineers. It's just the roles may change. Rather than typing on the CLI, you might be working in a controller or in the cloud, but you still need to understand networking principles. Okay, so that was quite a long ramble. I hope that kind of discussion was valuable to add to the course. I'm going to show you some more practical stuff now uh, in the rest of the course. But um, hopefully that gives you a good idea of what's important for the exam and kind of sets the the 10,000 foot view and overview of, of programming and uh, network automation. You don't have to learn the details of VMware's implementation for the Encore exam, but I really think it helps knowing a bit of history and seeing where this concept of software-defined networking can be applied in multiple domains. The point is, no longer today are we simply going to configure networks through the CLI. We're going to use a controller to give us additional benefits and software-defined networks.